<laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hello. Um, I'm Ellie. And I'm Anne Marie, and we are coming to you from the renowned art commune that is Eliana's room. Yes, and we are staring intently at our computer screens. Yes, we are. Ready to show you our art pieces. Well, today we're going to focus on two women who really engendered their surroundings. Yeah, and who saw the world in such a way that brought new meaning to art and abstraction in art itself. The first artist we're going to be looking at is Georgia O'Keeffe. She was most well known for her focus on flowers um, and her productions of them in large-scale paintings. The size she assigns to her flower certainly makes it so they cannot be overlooked. She would choose a close-up of a, of a flower, you know, get right in at a petal or a couple of petals. Um, it, we weren't painting, you know, flowers and vases anymore. This wasn't about arrangements. It was about the abstraction of the flowers. Yeah, definitely a new way to look at something yeah, so certainly. small and insignificant, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, talk about up close and personal. She was frustrated by the accusations, or I suppose I should say assumptions, laid on her paintings. Her intention was was simply to paint the flowers. That's what she wanted to do. She just wanted to make people take notice. She said, so I said to myself, I'll paint what I see, what the flower is to me. I'll paint it big and they'll be surprised into taking time to look at it, which, I mean, they certainly were surprised. And she declared that she would make even busy New Yorkers take time to see what she saw of flowers. So it was definitely her relationship to nature portrayed in her paintings. And, you know, so she sort of had a right to be offended that they would assign meaning to her paintings when the meaning of her painting was the painting itself. So the piece I chose by George O'Keeffe is called Black Iris 3, which is a variation, or at least one of many of her Black Iris paintings, and she painted this one in 1926. With Black Iris, as with many, if not most, of her paintings, her intention is to bring something to our attention. What O'Keeffe clearly shows in Black Iris, then, is that a single, seemingly lifeless color like, like black with the Black Iris is not, you know, only a singular notion, but something made up of, of many other colors itself, whether it's a, a purple or a gray or a green. And, and that was her point that, you know, bypassing the flowers because you were too busy or on your way to work meant you were missing all these different shades, not just one thing, but everything it represented, which is what her point was with abstract art as well. So it's actually Georgia O'Keeffe's attitude as well as her large scale paintings themselves that drew me to her as an artist. My artist was, is um, Margaret Burke White, and I'm going to focus on her compositions she did for Life magazine at Fort Peck Dam, Montana. Uh, specifically the one, the picture she took of the dam that made the first Life cover. Right, she took the first one ever. Yes. She started out as a commercial photographer in Cleveland, Ohio but then ended up at life and they shipped her off to Montana where she definitely encountered a very different society than she would in New York or yeah, in, certainly. in Cleveland. Um, it was a dead end town in Montana. Fort Peck Dam wasn't so much to look at, but she looked at this kind of desolate town as like new surroundings. I mean, mm. uh, the dam itself isn't very beautiful when you look at it, but it is very geometrically, like, dynamic. Yeah. And, and you see these, these, uh, these towers, just, they're so huge, and you see, like, in the corner, these two people walking alongside it, and you see how far man has progressed. The photo that I want to focus on is Fort Peck Dam, Montana, uh, photographed by Margaret Burke White. Uh, the thing that interests me the most about this photo is the geometric nature of it. Uh, it's a dam, which isn't something that people usually look at or photograph. This is something definitely um, a part of its era, since she was a New Deal ar mm -hmm. artist, mm -hmm. photographer, and just capturing the rapid growth of America at the time. Yeah, it's man-made. It's a dam. Yeah, definitely. And people didn't really focus on these kinds of uh, achievements back then. They were just happening and people would live alongside them, mm -hmm. especially in this place, Fort Peck. Uh, it was desolate. Not a lot of things were going on and the people around it were in poverty and they were just, they were living a very frugal lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And she she saw this kind of world surrounding this, this, uh, this dam and took it for what it was. 
The thing that I found really interesting, though, is the fact that she also captured two people off to the side that are being just dwarfed. Oh, right. I see them there. Yeah. They're so tiny in comparison. Yeah, they're just dwarfed by this huge man-made structure. Interesting. And to think that people like them, two, like, like tiny people, like, they they made this larger than life structure. Mm. So it's representative in a way of what was changing and how it was changing. Yeah, just progress, progress, definitely progress. And uh, in a time of like rapid growth and industrial revolution, was just full forward. Let's industrialize America, um, kind of initiative. And she would take um, pictures in in um, factories and just lots of different places that people would just pass by and never really look at as art or just look at in general. Yeah. Never have the chance to look at it in the way that she did. Yeah, no, I think that's definitely a, a testament, I suppose, to what you called her tenacity for life. The fact mm-hmm. that here they ship her off to Montana and it's not New York. It's not busy. It's not bustling. There's, you know, no fashion, no famous anyone. And, and yet she takes what she has and she turns it into the first the first life photo cover ever yep that's pretty incredible and i mean she really put herself out there and she got some amazing shots and yeah. that's why her photography still lives on today which she wouldn't have yeah exactly and i mean she wouldn't have gotten those shots if she hadn't been willing to be in the middle of it yeah definitely and it was george o'keefe herself who said it is by emphasis that we find the real meaning of things which i feel is something both of our artists did by again by coming closer to what was happening around them or or you know whether it was a, a dam being built or a flower growing they both chose to get closer and then just depict what they saw yeah and really abstract it from what other people saw it as exactly yeah a abstract. flower was not just a flower it was an organic form a dam wasn't just a dam it was something so geometric huge and geometric yeah. yeah yeah so and in that case i think the abstraction of their pieces really added to their works Definitely, both our women were just so willing to go out into the world and mm-hmm. definitely mm-hmm. look at it and through new eyes and make other people see the world as they saw it. Yeah, and that both of them chose to look a little closer at whatever was around them and then share that. I think that's really inspiring. Yeah, definitely. This has been our presentation. I'm Ellie. And I'm Anne-Marie. And as our women artists would say... No. They would they would tell stop putting words in their mouths. <laughs> they would, wouldn't they? Okay, well, with the fondest regards to Georgia O'Keefe and and to Margaret Brooke White. This has been Anne Marie and Ellie and we are signing off.